When I first met Mansell, he was very charming, very kind. I was in a difficult situation. I needed a place for my two children, so I moved in with Mansa, his wife, and his 13 children. Mansa practiced polygamy, and he wanted me to be one of his wives. Mansa was a very religious man, a very strict Muslim. I, too, was a devout Muslim. He ruled his house with fear and discipline. Our living conditions were like a concentration camp. We were on complete lockdown. The doors were locked. The windows were locked. I wasn't even allowed to go to school. Mansa made the children learn all the Quranic verses. And if they didn't, he would beat them and punish them. All I knew was abuse. He would lock us in the basement for days at a time. He would beat us. He would slam me against the walls and beat my hands and my feet. And I remember a time my dad took a boat paddle and just cracked me straight across the head. Blood was everywhere. He got a needle and thread and stitched my head back up. Living in his house was like a house of torture. Mansa would starve the children. When he would decide to feed us, we would vomit the food right back up. He would then make us eat our vomit. Mansa would have the children eat their own feces. I was raped by my father on a daily basis for 12 years. I was raped twice by Mansa. After I was raped, I found out I was pregnant. I had a baby girl. Mansa went off the deep end, and he locked me and my two children up in that garage, and he took my baby away. I was locked in that garage for over six months. It had no running water, no bathroom. I felt we were going to die in there. One day, Mansa took me with him to run errands, and we went to the post office. I slipped a note to the postal worker, just pleading for help that someone would find us. When those police finally arrived, this nightmare of torture and captivity was over.